Hello everyone, Nicole Stecklang, technical agronomist for DeKalb and Asgro in Northeast Iowa. This time our focus on fertility is a focus on phosphorus, one of our main macronutrients. Phosphorus also plays a lot of very critical roles, including is a main component in a lot of our metabolic pathways, such as photosynthesis and respiration, but it also plays a very critical role during our grain fill. Now, unlike potassium, where potassium stays kind of in the juices of the plant, Phosphorus does become incorporated in some of our different structural molecules as well as in the organic matter. So when we think about how do we get phosphorus back into the soil, it's going to take the degradation and breakdown of that crop residue by the microbes. Now when we think about phosphorus in our soils, we have to think about it a lot differently than we do potassium where potassium doesn't get tied up in our organic matter. It just kind of lives out there in the soil solution. It's living on the surface of our soil particles and it moves a lot easier and a lot better than something like phosphorus does. And that's because when we think about phosphorus, we have to think about it in these three different pools. You have your readily available, which is the smallest amount that we have. We have our partially slowly available pool of soil phosphorus. And then we have the stuff that basically is unavailable for that plant. So we have what is in our soil solution and that's readily available. It is available for the plant to soak up. And then we've got this next pool right here. So this is the phosphorus that's attached to the calcium and magnesium that's sitting on our CEC. It's also some of the phosphorus that's tied up in different small compounds in the soil solution with calcium magnesium and also as part of those um, humic acids and organic acids as that organic matter gets very close to breaking down and being completely kind of dissolved. So the way we think about these two here is that as that plant is pulling up the soil solution, the readily available phosphorus, it wants to keep kind of an equilibrium, a balance. So as this is sucked up, these are gonna start to kind of shed off and go into the soil solution. So our last pool of soil phosphorus is the biggest pool. It's huge. We have lots of phosphorus out there in that soil, but this takes years and years and years of weathering our primary minerals. So thinking like appetite, you know, you're thinking about your actual rocks. So it's important that as we remove phosphorus from the soils and we're moving phosphorus from this bank to this bank, that we continue to put phosphorus in our soils so we can kind of keep our saving bank up to date. So how much is that gonna take? If we look at a 230 bushel corn crop of corn grain, now we're gonna remove 0.32 units of P2O5 per bushel, take that by 230 bushels. We're looking at 73.6 units of P2O5. Now for this example, I'm going to use the MAP fertilizer, mono ammonium phosphate, which has an analysis of 1152O. So we've got 52% P2O5. So we're gonna take our 73.6 units of P2O5 removed um, by 52%. And we're gonna get 142 pounds of MAP fertilizer for removal. Now, on our build. Now, I personally like to see my phosphorus, my P1 at 30 parts per million. For this example, let's just say that we've got a current soil test P1 of 10 parts per million. Now, on average, it's going to take 18 units of P2O5 to increase the soil test by one part per million. So if I do 18 units and convert that into pounds of MAP, that's 34 pounds of MAP fertilizer to increase by one part per million. So 34 by 20, because I'm gonna take it from 10 to 30 parts per million, that's 680 pounds of fertilizer MAP. I'm gonna do that build over four years, so I'll take 680 divided by four and get to my 170 pounds of MAP per year. So I've got 142 plus 170, that's 312 pounds of MAP fertilizer to cover my removal of 230 bushel corn, as well as my quarter of my build to get me to 30 parts per million if I'm starting at 10. If I am figuring fertilizer for 230 bushel as silage crop, my removal goes up to 0.44 units of P2O5 per bushel. That comes to 101 units of P2O5. Turn it into fertilizer is 194 pounds of MAP. My build stays the same. This isn't going to change. That gives me a total of 364 pounds of MAP 
per acre to cover removal and build on silage corn. Switching to soybeans, if I assume a 65 bushel yield, I've got a removal of 0.72 units P2O5 by 65 bushels. I need to replace 46.8 units, turn that into fertilizer, and that's 90 pounds of MAP plus my build, and I've got 260 pounds of MAP. So those are just some basic calculations to try and get in the range of how much fertilizer you may need for phosphorus. Now, we also made a lot of assumptions and we also used a lot of averages. For example, on average, it takes 30 to 34 pounds of MAP to improve your soil test by one part per million. But that ranges between 16 and 67 pounds of MAP to improve by one part per million. So there's a very wide range, wider than there is for potash, and a lot of that is because of the different pools like we talked about before. So when you look at your soil test, that P1, that's really giving you more of an example of what that soil solution is. That P2, that's a stronger um, solution to extract the phosphorus from that soil sample. So it's going to give you a little bit of an idea of what you have kind of in your, in your bank account what's going to become available after you've kind of sucked up the, the phosphorus that's in the soil solution. Some of the other considerations that you have to um, think about is what's your soil type? How much soil organic matter do you have? Um, we also have to think a lot about our pH. So phosphorus, since it tends to make a lot of, um, a lot of friendships with calcium and magnesium and other positively charged ions like aluminum and iron. This means that it's going to be very um, controlled by pH. So when we have very high pHs, thinking like seven and above, you're gonna get more phosphorus tie up with magnesium and calcium. As we get lower, so thinking about five pHs, we're gonna get more phosphorus tie up with the aluminum and the iron that starts to um, be released from the soil at those lower pHs. So really keeping your pH neutralized where it should be helps a lot to make sure that you don't get near as much phosphorus tie up. Something else to think about in terms of phosphorus tie up is possibly banding our phosphorus fertilizer. So when you think about potash, it doesn't get tied up in the soil as easily as phosphate. So banding potash usually is not going to give you as much benefit when you think about availability of the fertilizer. However, in the phosphates, when you think about when you spread surface spread phosphates and then distribute it through the soil with tillage, you've got phosphorus that is touching all of this surface of the soil and it's got access to all this calcium and magnesium to get tied up with. But when you put it in a band, you've only got the phosphorus on that outer edge that is really touching a whole lot of soil, that's really touching a whole lot of calcium and magnesium to get tied up with, where you're gonna have everything in that band that's not really gonna get tied up and it's probably gonna have more availability for you. So that's all I've got for right now is a lot on phosphorus. As always, if you have questions, you can call, text, or email.